Much of this class is about equilibrium. I want to talk about equilibrium again. So right now what we're looking at is rigid bodies. So we're looking at things that actually have distances involved and forces that are not concurrent. And we want to look at how equilibrium has to balance all the loads that act on these, these two-dimensional objects. We'll come back to three-dimensional objects in a minute. The steps are exactly the same as they were before. We're going to read the problem, draw a free body diagram. Again, we're going to really focus on these free body diagrams. I can't say that often enough. If you can't get the free body diagram right, your chances of getting anything else right are almost nil. So once you've done that, find your givens, write down your loads. Our equations of equilibrium are now going to have an extra equation, than, more than they had before. Because anything that balances has to be balanced both in the sum of the forces and now in the sum of the moments. After all, if I have an object that's going around like this, it's not in equilibrium. So it's not allowed to spin either. Solve, answer, check. These are the same as they were before. The second step in finding this sum of the moments involves picking a specific point A. We're going to come back to that in a minute. When I'm talking about moments, I'm talking about adding up a lot of different things. We use the moment word moment to refer to a variety of things. The first of them is any force that's acting at a distance. So anytime the line of action doesn't actually pass through that point A, then there is a moment created at that point A. So if we go back to my lovely pinwheel here. If I have a force over here that's acting at a distance, it will turn. It can be a horizontal force up at the top, or a vertical force on the side, or any combination of thereof that will give me a moment at A. We can have applied moments. That's when I actually give you one, like 400 newton meters. Or any reaction moment. So if you have something that's being held absolutely in place so that you can push on it and it doesn't spin, then that's my hand is causing a reaction moment. All of those have to get added up. That's the sum of the moments at A. So if we look at this particular one, this is a very stiff, typical one. This is a simply supported beam with a couple loads on it. I have an applied 6-pound load, an applied 4-pound load, and an applied 10-foot-pound moment. To find the reactions at B and C, first, draw the free body diagram. The pin will give me two forces. The roller at C will give me one. So this is my free body diagram. List your forces. List your moments. List any load you have. And I want to suggest that you actually time to take this list and make it out. Because then you can see what the I's are, what the J's are, what moments you have, and you're less likely to leave one out. My sum of the forces in X and Y is approximately the same as it always was. My sum of the moments at A is a little different. First of all, I had to pick A. A is given to me in this problem only because I drew it there already. You get to pick. So I picked this one kind of at random. You might pick a different one. You might pick summing the moments at B or summing the moments at C. It really doesn't matter. In fact, sometimes we will pick two separate moments and write two sums of the moments equations. That also is fine. When I look at it, the other advantage in having a list of my loads is to say, does this force create a moment at A? This force, no, it doesn't, because A lies along its line of action. Does this force create a moment at A? Yes. The six pound load's line of action does not pass through A. So the reaction, the moment at A, due to this six pound force, is going to be six pounds times four feet. Now that moment, created at A, tends to turn the beam clockwise. This would make this beam tend to spin clockwise. So I've got that little arrow down here. Hold on to that for a minute. If we continue through here, does BX create a moment at A? No. BX has a line of action that passes through point A. Does BY create a moment at A? BY does create a moment at A. A does not lie along its line of action. The distance there is now 5 feet. So I have BY acting at 5 feet. That moment, BY times 5, tends to spin this this one's counterclockwise, this one's clockwise. Those tend to spin this beam, if you put your finger right here, like the middle of my pinwheel, 
The six pound force would tend to spin it counterclockwise. By would tend to spin it in the opposite direction. So when we come down here to this equation, we need to make sure that these two have a different sign. So if I make this one positive, I need to make this one negative. Now let's keep going through my list. Does CY create a moment at A? Yes. C a does not lie along the line of action of CY. It acts at a distance of one foot. So I have CY times one. What direction does that tend to spin this? If I put my finger right there, CY would tend to spin the beam counterclockwise. So I want to make sure that this sign matches that one. I made that positive, so I'm going to make this one positive. The 10 foot-pound load doesn't get multiplied by anything. It's an applied load. It's already a moment. So it's already tending to spin the beam clockwise. So this, the sign in this equation of this term needs to match this one. So this will be also negative. Now, I have three equations. I have only three unknowns, and I can solve for all of those, and that's what I end up with. And that's sort of the basis of how you want to do these equilibrium equations, equilibrium problems. Everything has to come back to sort of following this step and being able to sum the moments at the end.